Hello my lovely cultists, two videos in two days, you guys must be losing your minds. I promised y'all that there'd be a lot more content with AI and machine learning tech going forward. And I am nothing if not a sweet and innocent maiden. So I hope you guys are super hyped because we're about to take things to the next level and grow this cult out even more. Today we're actually going to be talking about a very interesting question, which is are transformers actually effective for time series forecasting? So to give you some context of what this video will cover, we'll be doing a first a historical overview of why people thought transformers might be a good idea. What is it about them that makes them potentially good for this? We'll be comparing transformers against a very simple baseline autoregressive model called D-linear. And also we'll be covering if the meme doesn't give it away and if uh, this should not come as a shock to those of you who are deeper into tech or AI, but you'll see that transformers don't do as well. So we'll also be covering potential reasons behind its failure. So this is going to be really, really insightful to those of you who really want to study these topics in more depth. So make sure you watch this through because there's a few interesting tidbits from this uh, research that I went through. So first, the historical context, obviously, 2022 was when we really saw Transformers become kind of codified in the AI space as one of the greatest contributions because we saw large language models generate a lot of hype and because of that people started looking into Transformers and the attention is everything paper etc. Attention is all you need sorry not everything. So just a, so we know that they were created as kind of upgrades to RNNs because RNNs tend to forget when we have long sequences of data, RNNs can forget the first tokens, the first few tokens, etc. With transformers, we created this kind of mechanism that can remember important tokens that came even earlier in your text, even if they came super early, as long as they're within the transformers capabilities, they'll remember those early tokens. So this again has you thinking a little bit, what if we made this, what if we flip this dynamic, made it more and put it into time series forecasting because time series is also about remembering historical data and making trends from it etc in a way that's all ml but you guys get the point so to do so we're going to compare transformers against a very simple linear model called d linear d linear as you can see on the right is a stupidly simple model that's it i can uh, that's all it is and this really is very interesting to see. So why are we using such a simple model and not one of the more complex models that you might see that are more baseline state of the art? So in simple words, the simplicity means that it's cheap to run, it's very efficient, and it's easy to understand, which means that if you're running a bunch of experiments, we can really, really stack a multiple transformers against this model and run on a bunch of data sets and really get a comprehensive overview. This becomes super real, super cool because think of it this way. If we had a much more complex models, we might need to cut corners with experiments and comprehensiveness, etc. Here we're just seeing, can transformers stack up to the simple model? If they cannot, then there's really not even a point of going harder, more complex models because they can't even hold a candle to the little bro. Why, why would they step up to the big bro? That's really the idea here. So. That's, that's why we're using the simple model. So keep that in mind. The point isn't to show that D-linear is great, it's to show whether transformers can hold their own in time series forecasting. So how well did it do? As alluded to in the introduction, not too well, sadly. Um, so in the exchange rate data set, as you can see, the orange is the D-linear and the red is the ground truth. I have night light on, so the colors might be slightly different, but if you guys can see these two. D-linear is the closest to transformers for the most bit. Obviously, when there's a sudden spike in ex exchange rate, we go the very wrong informer and fedformer seem to do better, but or sorry, autoformer and fedformer seem to do better. But that's that already tells us a very interesting insight that oh, it seems to stack up well. Here are some more data sets. So we've already zoomed in on exchange rate, but even with electricity and ETT H two we see that really transform uh, delinear is the best um, 
best uh, pro uh, approximation of uh, the ground truth, which is surprising if you were uh, because you'd expect transformers with their more com have computation heavy approach would do better. Now, they have this um, insight here, which is that when the researchers went through this, they saw just more proof where they're saying that, oh, this can't really predict aperiodic data or this fails to capture the scale and bias of other data sets. So they're already saying that Transformers probably not too good for time series. And their conclusion is pretty straightforward when they say embarrassingly simple so linear model and that's outperforming these on different benchmarks, different data sets. So now let's look over why this might be the case. Why is it that Transformers would fail? So simply put, the attention mechanism, which has been the contribution, the multi-headed self-attention, what this does is it makes your procedure, it's kind of permutation invariant. So it, it doesn't matter which came first, which came second, because it's going to try keeping track of all that's important and all that matters. This part flips when we talk about, uh, what do you say, when we talk about time series, because in time series, the order the data comes in is extremely important. If I, if I had a sequence going this way and I had a sequence going this way, they, they mean two different things, even if individually, like I can show that there are points overlap. So the point, if a point exists in sequence A, it also exists in sequence B and vice versa. But if their trends are different, we're talking about two different stories from the model. And just from a little bit of personal experience, I worked quite extensively in supply chain forecasting and predicting risk. And in that case, what we see is the simpler model. So we um, we were looking at Arima's uh, transformers, uh, LSTMs, etc. The much simpler models actually were much better with apply adapting to supply chain shocks because again, what happens in a shock is you're changing up the dynamics of the operation. So suddenly something changes, maybe the factories go down, maybe costs suddenly rise up because of new taxation policy, whatever, which fundamentally changes it. And the more complex models tend to over index on the earlier data they were trained on and they can't adapt as well. With a simple model, they'll just pick up, pick out the new data, adapt to that much better. And they also haven't learned as much of the noise and the information in there. So that becomes very useful. Now, this is personal conjecture on my part, but based on my experiences, based on the research, I think this might be worth looking into for the future, which is that what we've seen is with deep learning, the main um, benefit is that we have non-linearity in it, which allows us to model more complex relationships. When we see simple models, often linear models are perform or hold their own very strongly against these more complex systems. That has you thinking perhaps time series forecasting in its nature seems to be, or most of the data sets we seem to use seem to be very mostly linear, which is important to really think about where, where does that come from? Is that worth investigating? This is just something that I'm putting out there as a theory of my own. You'd have to experiment and look into it with more details. I would trust one of you smart people to do the same. So as always, if you want to read more about this, I have an article that goes into this paper in more depth. You'll be able to see the HD images much better, etc. So um, I will link to that. Check it out. Check out whatever I uh, my And my videos might be kind of bootleg, but my writing is not. So if you are really interested in these topics, you should uh, check out AI Made Simple, Tech Made Simple. All the links will be in the description below or the or my bio based on which social media platform you're looking into. But if you just Google my name, Devansh Machine Learning, you should be able to come across all of my content. So make sure you check all of that out. Check out my different uh, platforms on social media and all of that will help you a ton. Alrighty, my lovely chocolate milk cart. This has been a pleasure. This is Devansh. Go kill all and stay woke, my loves. Bye.